My name is Kevin Johnson. I'm the Associate Director of Bands and Chief Arranger for the Sonic Boom of the South. So Mr. Kevin Johnson, uh, he's my right hand man. He's our Associate Director of Bands and Chief Arranger here at Jackson State University. And Mr. Johnson came to the Sonic Boom of the South in uh, the year 2000. In 2000, that whole class was a very important year for the band. It was a pivotal year for the band. And, um, and it kind of went through a resurgence in a lot of ways. And so they had, you know, some outstanding students in that group. That's not to take away from any of the groups prior to that. But I do know it was a different affinity for that group for uh, Dr. Liddell at that time. And so, you know, a part of that, as I mentioned, they had a lot of talent. And, and, and one of those talents and individuals was, you know, Mr. Kevin Johnson. I've been arranging music. Uh, I, I got my first maybe shot or trying at it uh, about 10th grade in high school uh, on paper, uh, no software, anything like that. So uh, since about 1997 or eight, somewhere around there. Oh man, um, I got into doing it. How did that even happen? <laughs> uh, I, I just kind of enjoyed figuring out how to make stuff happen on an instrument. Um, and it was one or two at, at the, on the first try. Um, I remember we uh, went to like a church convention or something like that. And we had a little band at the church convention and we wanted to play a popular gospel song that was out at the time. Um, so I, I start, I had a bunch of sheets of paper in front of me at the hotel and we were just trying to scribble out all of the notes for every for the instruments that we had in that little ensemble. And um, it was just kind of cool being able to make um, music from one medium translate to another one. He was one of the ones, one of the only ones that I can recollect or, you know, have, you know, at least within the span of, of maybe a couple of decades or so that had the, the fortune of being able to arrange for the band as a freshman and actually get a tune played. And um, I believe I'm not mistaken, that first tune was Thong Song by Cisco. And, you know, so with that being said, you know, the, the band. Um, it was a different band in some aspects, you know, back then and, and you had to you had to earn your stripes and you have to earn your stripes now, you know, don't get me wrong. But, you know, again, you, you really have to know what you're doing in order to get an arrangement played. And, you know, so with that being said, that, that lets me know that even back then, you know, as a freshman within the band, he was just an outstanding talent. And, you know, since that first arrangement, he has written, you know, I, I, I can't even begin to quantify how many arrangements he has written for the band. And, you know, he was very instrumental in, in carving out, you know, uh, the sound of the group. Um, the, the, the difficulty in arranging sometimes doesn't necessarily come from the size of the band and things like that. It's just making sure that what you're doing is relevant and appealing and um, it, it reaches people. Um, from the paper to the people that are actually playing it then to the people that are actually listening to it. Oh man, um, I get inspiration from the billions of texts that people send uh, suggesting songs and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of it, you know, just me getting a chance to, to listen to stuff on my own. Um, if I can kind of listen to it outside of being um, outside of it being work and I can just kind of listen to it for pleasure and enjoyment first, um, you know, that's kind of it may even be a situation where something comes from another song and goes into another one and things like that. So uh, that inspiration can kind of come from a whole bunch of different places. It was very instrumental in, um, you know, carving out what our sound is today. Um, you know, I, I can go on and talk about a lot of his arrangements, but, you know, I know when I was in the band, um, you know, although he did a lot of full length tunes, you know, he, he made the rap tune popular. You know, he did, you know, this way and and um, and and it's a new day. And, you know, so many other things when I was a freshman, you know, also did know your clap. So, you know, he that, that started to kind of bring about a new identity in the Sonic Boom of the South when we started to play those rap tunes. And, and again, I really want to make sure that I'm clear that he didn't just do those rap tunes, but I, I think he started to introduce some of those things along with other students as well that that made rap tunes popularized in the HBCU culture. Uh, my, my first, I guess the, the biggest piece of advice that I would give somebody who's trying to arrange um, on any medium is to know what you're doing before you get into software. Um, I don't think that software is bad. You know, technology, of course, is always going to be a part of what we're doing these days. But um, if you can't, I, I would almost say that if you could never put it on paper, you probably shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Um, it's a situation where the paper is not going to respond to you. You have to know what to bring to that paper. But when you get on software and stuff like that, some 
sometimes it can give you a um, false sense of what's actually going on, which, um, you know, that knowledge base of knowing what a person can play, knowing what sounds good on this actual instrument versus a computer instrument, um, I think is super important. And um, just kind of really studying and really putting in the time, it's, 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 um, it's kind of like an instrument. You have to practice that, you have to do it. Um, and, and in order to make it work. You have to be a, a very experienced arranger to not just do the, the run of the mill uh, voicing. And what I mean by that is that, you know, typically you have melody, typically you have harmony, and you have a bass line. And, you know, the way that a lot of arrangements, you know, go now, or the way that they do things now, that's what the typical format is, along, of course, with the counter melody. But, you know, the way that he's able to connect harmonies and immerse harmonies together to get a certain timbre and a certain seniority out of our group is something that's, that's definitely special. And, you know, we're definitely happy to have him. Um, you know, I, I would dare to say that he's definitely the best arranger of our time. Um, you know, of course, being a part of our generation. And so there's a lot that, that I even learned from him. You know, I, I arranged just a little bit for the band, you know, although most of the things that we play come from his pen, but I learned a lot from him. You know, I, I share some of my arrangements with him, you know, see like, hey man, you know, what were you suggesting this? And believe me, he, would, he wouldn't let anybody put anything out that's wrong as, as it relates to the quarter structure. Uh, if he sees or hears something weird within an arrangement, you know, from students, and again, all the way to, you know, staff, he'll, he's very instrumental in, you know, providing a helping hand, say, hey, you may want to consider this, you may want to try this, because he takes his job very serious, seriously. And, um, and I just want to make sure that, you know, everybody knows the impact that he is making on the Sonic Boom of the South. And not to mention, he's an outstanding educator as well. So, you know, he's a, you know, an inimitable arranger, um, an outstanding human being, and a great educator. Thank you.